the utmost west, flowers of the setting sun, welcome the heavenly guest in whom the dawn has come. He brings an ever-ending light whose triumph for a darkest night. Shout as you journey home, songs be in every mouth. Love from the north may come, from east and west and south. In Jesus all shall find rest, in him thy I'm Jeff Ward, Principal of Homerton College, Cambridge, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you all to the service of carols and readings. Be you a student, be you a retired senior member, a fellow, a member of the congregation of the Church of St. John the Evangelist, an alumna or alumnus on the other side of the world, or just down the road, you're all very welcome. Let us begin with a prayer. At this season of Advent, we pray. Advent, God, we journey with you to Bethlehem stable and a newborn king, ears attuned to the song of the angels, eyes alert for Bethlehem's star. Forgive us if on our journey we are distracted by the tempting offers of this world. Keep our hearts aflame with the hope of Christmas and the promise of a Saviour. Amen. The first reading is taken from the second chapter of St Luke's Gospel, beginning to read at verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth in Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all people. Here ends the first reading. Behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To you is born a Savior, Christ the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Unity Brass Band Leicester by Kim Moore. When I walk past a brass band playing carols, I think of us all back then, those evenings, walking the streets to stand under a pool of light. Coventry Carol, in the bleak midwinter. The carol books with hand-drawn angels on the front, the likes of which I've never found again. How sometimes I stood apart in the dark, because I knew each carol off by heart. Watched the band gathered round the light, how our conductor could play anything, but often played soprano just for fun. The descants floating up into the night, not written down, straight from his heart and made of light. One night it was so cold, all the valves froze solid. First the brass and euphonium, then the baritone stopped speaking, like animals dying from thirst. They fell in order of size. Tenor horns next, then cornets, one by one, and his last the stop to stop its song. One last breath of silent, silent night. <laughs> From way off, out of darkness, we saw it. The city's glittering heart. Its promised streets garlanded, radiating out in the frosty air. Place de la Concorde, Madeleine, Notre Dame, Tour Eiffel, the Latin Quarter. Abbesses and the climb up to Montmartre, where Van Gogh had toiled under these lights. Breath of the Seine, edging the city's heartbeat, the famous bridges encapsulating journeys, haloed. 
tourists clasping history. With Sacre Coeur, this great basilica built following the Franco-Prussian War, overlooking all. The flower stall holders calling for customers, along with the crowded cafes, restaurants, bars, patisseries, open to sell their wares. Everything illuminated, as though evening light rivaled daytime and a meal out to celebrate the fetes were an invitation to savour food for soul and eye. Almost as if the whole city were dining out in one awaited spectacle. Sharing expectations and moments with locals and visitors. Lovers, parents and children, scarved, mittened, the sense of the party carrying on, and Père Noël still sky jingling, turning the day on its head. Everything framed by bonhomie and Christmas markets, chance meetings, so many drawn to the celebrations, this gaiety of blending, music, welcoming, reclaiming colours under the light, as though nothing could go unnoticed in this walk, walk city. We had seen the world hush for the shortest day, the skies darkening over. And now the solstice gloom had turned to light, holding us, real as our venturing, retrieving meanings shaped by days drawing in, beckoning us towards blazes of colour, neon, illuminations that would stay with us for the year to come. Thank you.
Hush by Tony Curtis. The truth is, the bushes were laden with bright red berries, the heavens lit with stars, and though it was deep winter, green leaves unfurled like small hands opening. Trees stood still. Above them, the curve of two bare hills softened. Rivers in torrent quietened appeared to hold their breath. Even the donkey in the corner of the stable knelt, lay down. Whereas the night before, our hands were cold and water in the well had frozen, that night the air was honeyed, as if a veil of wild heather had fallen over the town. Somebody said, it was miraculous. But is that the word for it? The world was so hushed, you could hear a newborn baby cry. Let us pray. We give thanks for all that we have achieved this term, for the progress that we have made in our studies, and for all that we have learnt about patience, mindfulness and carefulness and about how to live in love and peace with all people. We pray for the needs of others, especially the poor, the hungry, the helpless, the unloved, the sick, and those who care for them, and for those who are isolated and lonely. We ask that they may know your guiding and healing hand and pray that we may do our part to be loving, generous, and supportive. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, in times of old you spoke through the prophets, infusing their words with the hidden presence of the Christ to come. May our hearts be attuned to your prophetic voice today. And may your gifts of grace and discernment reveal to us the hidden Christ, veiled within the darkness and light of our world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The final reading is taken from the first chapter of St. John's Gospel beginning to read at verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word 
was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Here ends the reading. and readings to a close, saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may God's blessing rest upon us and upon those we love and upon those we find it hard to love, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>